everyone, it's me, Ahama Sarah Fisher, and today's video is about Nimrod. Nimrod was the very first king of Babylon. So he was the founder of the kingdom of Babylon. Nimrod gets such brief mention in the Bible, but really, he's such a key figure, and it's very important to know about him. He's known as a mighty hunter. He was the great grandson of Noah. He was the builder of the Tower of Babel. And the Bible in 1 Chronicles and Genesis 10 describes him as one who became a mighty man of God. He wasn't originally a mighty man of God, but he became one. So there's a transformation that he went through a very mysterious transformation and that's what we're going to uncover in this video genesis 10 8 to 10 and cush begat nimrod he began to be a mighty one in the earth he was a mighty hunter before the lord wherefore it is said even as nimrod the mighty hunter before the lord and the beginning of his kingdom was babylon Let's begin with the genealogy of Nimrod. Nimrod's great-grandfather was Noah. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and uh, Ham had a son, Cush. Cush was the father to Nimrod. So, going back to Noah. Noah had an incident where he had a vineyard and he actually partook of his own wine and he got drunk one day and he was in his tent uncovered and Ham came into his tent, saw him uncovered and went out and told his brothers about it. And his brothers, when he heard about it, they were very respectful. They went in without looking at the father, covered their eyes, turned their heads and covered the father with uh, cloth. Now the next day, Noah was so upset and he cursed Ham and he released a curse upon his son Canaan. As for Japheth and Shem, he gave a blessing to them because they acted appropriately. Why Ham was inside um, Noah's tent, we don't know. Why he didn't turn his head and why he didn't cover his father. Well, it all points to the fact that there's unrighteousness, a weakness being shown in Ham. A, a sense of disrespect and uh, a lack of reverence for his father. Now, it's no surprise that it's in the bloodline of Ham that we begin to see that his grandson, Nimrod, begins to show signs of unrighteousness as well. Look at the name Nimrod. The name Nimrod comes from the Hebrew verb marad, meaning rebel. Nimrod means rebel. It also means let us revolt. So by his name alone, you get to see the clues to what this man is about to become. So in order to understand what was it about him that made him become a mighty man, Word that's used to describe him in Hebrew is Giburim. Giburim is the mightiest man of the earth. And that same word Giburim is used to describe the Nephilim that existed before the flood. In fact, in the Septuagint, Nimrod is described as a giant on the earth. The giants, as we know, were the Nephilim, the offspring of fallen angels and women who existed in antediluvian times before the flood. That was the purpose of the flood, was to wipe out all this iniquity and this fallen angel activity that had flooded the earth. But after the flood, when all this was supposed to be washed away, we see that the scripture actually describes that Nimrod becomes a gibberim or giant. So are they saying that he becomes a Nephilim? We cannot say this for certain, but there's something unusual going on with Nimrod. Septuagint translation of Genesis 10, 8. Cush begot Nimrod. He began to be a giant on the earth. He was a giant, a hunter before the Lord God. Therefore, they would say, as Nimrod, the giant, the hunter before the Lord. 
So let's uncover what was it that actually made him become this Giborim, one of the mightiest men on earth at that time. Well, you can find the answer in the book of Jasher. The book of Jasher is an ancient historical record. It's akin to the newspapers of today. So they chronicles, the actual records of what is happening during the times. And it's a very reputable source because the Bible itself refers to the book of Jasher. You can see references to Jasher in Joshua, in the second book of Samuel, in second Timothy. So we know we can refer to this book. In the book of Jasher, it's described how Nimrod actually received a very unusual inheritance that contributed to his mysterious transformation. Genesis 3, 21 to 23. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made garments of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. Okay, back to the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, after the fall, when their eyes were open and they could, they could see that they were naked, the Lord actually gave them a gift of animal skins to cover themselves. Now, what happened to those animal skins? According to the book of Jasher, it is listed that these animal skins were passed down through their lineage, through the descendants, down to Enoch, down to Methuselah, down to Lamech, down to Noah. And in the book of Jasher, it describes how Ham actually steals these animal skins from Noah. So there's another indication that he's not a very righteous man. So what happens to the animal skins? They get passed down to Cush, Ham's son, and then Cush passes it down to Nimrod. The book of Jasher lists how at age 20, Nimrod puts on these animal skins and he begins to grow stronger and stronger and stronger and he becomes this mighty hunter and he starts rising in influence. He just transforms and uh, he starts going out into battle and winning battles and becoming very persuasive. He's changing these skins that the Lord initially gave Adam and Eve that are now in his possession are strengthening him. So he gains a name for himself and um, he's, he's gaining popularity as well. Jasher 7, and in their going out, Ham stole those garments from Noah, his father, and he took them and hid them from his brothers. And when Ham begat his firstborn Cush, he gave him the garments in secret, and they were with Cush many days. And Cush also concealed them from his sons and brothers. And when Cush had begotten Nimrod, he gave him those garments. Nimrod given ancient garments. And Nimrod became strong when he put on the garments, and God gave him might and strength. And he was a mighty hunter in the earth. Yeah, he was a mighty hunter in the field. And he hunted the animals, and he built altars, and he offered upon them the animals before the Lord. And Nimrod strengthened himself, and he rose up from amongst his brethren, and he fought the battles of his brethren against all their enemies round about. And the Lord delivered all the enemies of his brethren in his hands. And God prospered him from time to time in his battles. And he reigned upon the earth. There is a very pivotal time where the children of Japheth were coming into war with his own brethren. And Nimrod tells the people, don't worry, we're going to win. And he's so strong and he also has the ability to strengthen them. So not only is he a mighty warrior, not only is he physically strong, but he is influential and he has charisma. And then they win that major battle. And because he has gained such popularity, the people crown Nimrod as their king. And then he looks for a place to create his kingdom. He finds a valley and China, the kingdom is developed. And then we have the cities of Babylon, which develop in his other cities. So he's the first king of Babylon. 
So we see from this point that all seems well. He's been strengthened, he's been prospered, and even there's indications in the book of Jasher that at that time he was submitted to the Lord in the sense that he built altars to the Lord and he gave animal offerings to the Lord and the Lord was on his side building him up because he wore his gift of the animal skin. Then he is now the first king of Babylon. However, this completes part one of a series I'm making on Nimrod. Look forward to part two, which will be posted soon. Shalom and God bless.